All right, sixth grade, here we go. We're talking about place value and naming numbers. Now, I think some of you might be saying, oh, Mr. Schwartz, naming numbers, please. I've been doing that since I was, like, in kindergarten. You know, we got, like, one, two, seven, eight. I can even go into the hundreds, 205. Well, things are getting a little more complicated uh, as we get to know mixed numbers and decimal places. So, uh Let's talk about naming numbers. Here are the notes you need to take. They're all in red. That means you need to take them. And the first one is there is a quasi-symmetry on both sides of the ones place. Now you're thinking, like, what in the world are you talking about? So quasi is a word that means um, uh, something that appears to be true but is not exactly true. Um, or is not true at all. So this is saying there's a symmetry on both sides of the ones place. So if you look on either side of the ones place, it looks like you have like a mirror image or you have symm symmetry, uh, but it's not perfect. So that's why I call it a quasi-symmetry. The second note is numbers to the left of the decimal express whole, whole units. So if we're looking at the left of the decimal, we're talking about uh, whole units, whatever it is, full dollars, full eggs, full math teachers who happen to be handsome, things like that. Uh, and then the last number, or last note, is that numbers to the right of the decimal describe the part of the next whole unit. So uh, if you are talking about um, the number of beautiful hairs on Mr. Schwartz's beautiful head, um, you might use a whole number like uh, 10,500,000. But then if we were looking to the right of the decimal, we'd be talking about part of the next full hair. So maybe I cut half of it um, on accident or maybe one of my students did it. But that would be to the right of the decimal, we'd be talking about part of the next whole uh, length of hair or follicle. These are some more notes, and I'm gonna ask you to take down this entire picture. So you're gonna have to pause, and you're gonna complain, maybe, or you're just gonna love it, because uh, you love math, and you love your math teacher. Uh, but you need to take down this whole picture, including the notes above and below. The note above says, before the decimal, read groups of three, and name the period. And you're thinking, what is a what do you mean a, a period? And these are the different names of periods, like the billions period, the millions period, the thousands period, and the ones period we actually don't name. So I'm gonna maybe leave that one off. But we'll read groups of three. So we're gonna start off with this number you can see I've written in, and we'll read them groups of three. So that first set of three is 207, name the period, 207 billion. Next we have 56 million, so 207 billion named the period. 56 million, 3,021. Now, this is an important note. People say and when they're naming numbers a lot, but we only use and when we're looking at the decimal point. So whenever you get to the decimal point, you have to read and, because we're about to talk about the part of the next whole. And the last note says after the decimal, just read the number that you see, whatever it looks like, then say the place value. So this number to the right of the decimal, if I just look to the right, this looks like 469. But then we say the place value, which in this case is the last place value above the nine, our last digit, is 100,000. So altogether, this is 207 billion, 56 million, 3,000, 21, and 469 hundred thousandths. Okay, so let me fill in some notes so you guys fill in them too. So this is 207 billion, 56 million, 3,000, 21, and 469 hundred thousands. So that's how we would read this number. Let's look at our example number one. You have to copy down all of this. It's all in red, please. Now let's look. So to the left, we're going to look in these pairs of three and name the period. So that first one is not in the ones, and it's not in the thousands. That's nine million. So this would be, this number is nine million. There's nothing in the thousands, so we actually don't have to say it. Then we have 312, 312. At the decimal, we say and. And that number after the decimal is 213. 213. 
and what place value is that in? Well, we said there's some symmetry to the left and the right of this ones place. So to the right, we can say after the ones, you would go tenths, hundredths, thousands. This is ten thousands. So, so 13 ten thousands. And we've got to remember this th on the end. That lets us know we're after the decimal. The THs are why it's not a perfect symmetry. It's a quasi-symmetry. So our next part, A and B, the first says name the thousands place. In this case, the thousands place digit. We well, you know the thousands is to the left of the ones place. It goes tens, hundreds, thousands. So there's a zero. Oh, and then ten thousands, sorry. So there's a zero in the ten thousands place. And then again, we start in that quasi-symmetry means to the right of the decimal, or right, sorry, of the ones place, it goes tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousandths. Again, we're to the right of the decimal because of that th, and so that digit is a three. As always, I'm going to leave you with some work to do on your own, so practice number one, I want you to name that number, write it out as a number, then name it please, and then name the digits that appear in the thousands place and the hundredths place, and I will catch you later. Thanks.